Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will share with you guys my first impressions, thoughts, and some feedback on the initial round of testing on the new Azurite Essence system. Um, initially, I looked at these on stream and was very disappointed, to say the least, uh, just because it seemed like we didn't really have any options. But then when they actually implemented this onto the PTR, it does seem like we do have some options in in some cases however there are very clear outliers so far that will be definitely best in single target situations and some that will be definitely best in aoe situations um so still there are some issues with the system but rather than just talking about the system overall i wanted to take a look at the specific traits for dps dk and how they interact with our toolkit for both unholy and frost so jumping straight into it um the first one is the defensive one, and I'm not going to talk about this too much, Azeroth's Undying Gift. Uh, it reduces all damage taken by 40% for 2 seconds, then by 20% for 2 seconds, and it has a 45 second cooldown. So in raid encounters, if there's a massive AoE burst that is otherwise not survivable, or if you push high enough Mythic Plus, where a one-shot mechanics might be a thing, um, you might play this, but otherwise I don't see it used too much. Second one, Blood of the Enemy. This comes from PvP. This one is extremely overpowered for classes who benefit um, heavily from crit. So either on Holy on single target, Frost DK both on single target or on AoE, uh, Fire Mages for example. This trait is absolutely insane, but... We have others that are even more powerful, and that is the ac actual mind-boggling uh, fact here. So, taking a look at this, the Heart of Azeroth erupts violently dealing 37,000, essentially 38,000 shadow damage to enemies within 12 yards. You gain 25% critical strike chance against the targets, so only the ones that do get hit by this ability, and your crit damage is increased by 35% for 15 seconds. It's on a one and a half minute cooldown. This is absolutely insane. So if you think of interactions like Frost DK Frost Sight, for example, that benefits from critting much more than other abilities, that interaction just with this active is nuts because you can get this on every single enemy and it's a 1.5 1, 1 minute cooldown. So that's fairly short. You will have it up for either every big trash pool or every other trash pool. Um, or if you're using this on single target, which due to some other traits here, you, I don't think you will. But if you do end up using it on single target, you will have it up for your burst every single time. So again, this trait is, it seems a little overtuned currently, um, but it is absolutely insane on AoE. On single target, I don't see it will, I don't think it will be that beneficial. So the passive, your critical strike uh, with spells and abilities grant a stack of blood of the enemy. Upon reaching 25 stacks, you gain 1000 haste for 12 seconds. Each stack of blood of the enemy grants 29 crit, so at uh, 10 stacks, that's 290. At 20 stacks, that is 580, so it's about 700 crit, right? Um, blood of the enemy has 25% chance of only consuming 15 stacks instead of the whole 25. This is kind of tricky. I tested this on AoE and it seems pretty nuts for Unholy as well as Frost. Um, I think it's it's actually a little bit better for Unholy in particular be just because it does proc the haste uh, which Frost doesn't really want too much. But there's no ICD on this on how fast you can stack it. So on four targets I'm able to stack it up to 25 and proc the thousand haste within maybe three or four seconds. If you do a mythic plus pull and you pull like 10 mobs for example you will probably be able to stack this to 25 in probably two globals you outbreak and you epidemic once so that that might take you three seconds or if you have runic power going in then it's going to take you two seconds with frost decay it will be a little bit slower just because you don't have as many instances of damage because it's unholy obviously whenever your outbreak ticks Whenever your Outbreak or your Virulent Plague flares, um, whenever your Epidemic hits a target, whenever the, that one Epidemic hit cleaves to nearby targets, we just have so many instances of damage that can proc it uh, that it's absolutely insane. 
on Frost, it will be your Frost Sights and your Remorseless Winter Ticks and your Howling Blast uh, main hit and cleaves. So still on Frost, you have quite a few damage instances that can uh, cause this to activate. I probably have a few jump cuts in this video just because I am still sick, as you can hear, so I want to edit out all those coughs. So moving on to the next trait, we have Engine of Ceaseless Progress. Um, this is currently a very underwhelming trait, in my opinion. So what it does, I'll read you the passive first, because without understanding the passive, the major won't make much sense. So the passive is that every 2 seconds, um, the Heart of Azeroth empowers you with 31 haste, mastery, or crit. After reaching 10 stacks, you gain an 8 second buff that doubles the effect of all of them. So this only happens in combat by the way, and as you can see here I have my Engine of Mastery, Engine of Crit, and Engine of Haste. And every 2 seconds randomly I will get one of these stacks. And when the first one hits 10, I get a buff that doubles the effect of all of these. So if I have a total of 10, or a, I have a total of 20 stacks, let's say, um, it will be as if I had 40 stacks. What the Major does is it quadruples the tick rate of how fast you're gaining these stacks for 10 seconds. So during the 10 second period, you tick one every half second, so that means that you will get a total of 20 stacks. So if you're able to go up to, I don't know, let's say about 7 or 8 on your highest one, now if these go up equally, that's the best case scenario, if one of them ticks up to 10 real quick while the other are still at 4 or 5, you get less stats. So it is a little RNG, but here I'll just drop my Azrae plant, as you can see they're ticking up way faster. And their, um, their power is also doubled here for this duration. So you make it up to, I don't know, about 40 stacks. With the double duration, you'll get 80 at the very peak. But on average, I would say you would um, hit maybe a about 40, um, 40, 50 at most. To be honest, this feels underwhelming because it's not a lot of stats. And it's for a very short duration. So overall it might damage or it might equal out to be quite nice damage increase if your character does benefit from both um, haste, mastery and uh, crit. However, my suggestion for this would be reducing it to only proc two of the stats and just pick your two highest ones. So for me, it would be crit haste um, or even just reducing it to one of your uh, highest secondary stats just to make sure that everyone kind of benefits from this equally um, or fairly equally. Obviously with that they would need to increase the amount of stats you get, they can just leave it at 31. So if they drop it down to 2 stats, then increase it by 30%, if they drop it down to 1, increase it by 60%. Um, so yeah, this, this trait feels a little underwhelming. Moving on to the um, essence of focusing Iris. So this is supposed to be like an AoE trait. It cleaves all enemies in front of you over 2.5 seconds. And you do cast the ability, so it's a 1.1 second cast. Then you have to channel it. During the channel, you can't press anything else. So for those 2.5 seconds, for example, if I'm running on Holy Frenzy, my auto attacks won't hit, um, so I can't proc things. Also, I can't apply Festering Wounds uh, due to my auto attacks not happening. So this is a little weird. One of my main concerns with it is that the frontal is very, very narrow on it. So if you take a look at it, and I cast it, it's a beam. It's not a cone, it's a beam. And that beam sim seems to have a very small hitbox at the moment, and I submitted this in feedback. Um, if I was to stand right here, and we tested this yesterday on stream, if I was to stand right here and cast this straight, you would think that it would hit all four of these targets. Where in reality, it will only hit these two, because it will clip their hitbox, but this one, as its hitbox is a little off to the side, it will not clip it. So, it is a little weird, and I hope they increase it to maybe make it a cone instead of a beam, uh, just to make sure that you can actually hit as many targets as possible. And just to explain this a little further, each Whenever you cast it, each target will get hit 10 times. So that's how you can tell how many targets were hit. 
And each of those instances of damage does have a chance to crit. So for the passive, every two seconds the Heart of Azeroth absorbs near latent energy, increasing your haste by 29 stacking up to 10 times. And the UI is bugged here, but when you're at 10 stacks, you actually have a chance to do some damage as well that just randomly procs. Um, so I, it doesn't show it here, but if I was to switch away from it and hover over it, it would show it. So the passive is fairly boring. It will just come down to, is haste good for you? And secondly, how often does the extra damage proc? I think it's like 6,000 extra damage. Uh, moving on to Guardian of Azeroth. Now this one is actually pretty cool single target. Uh, whenever you summon this Guardian, he will chain cast um, Earth Spike or Azerite Spike at your target, which does some damage, but more importantly, it applies a 15% damage taken debuff to the target. And the Guardian's up for uh, 30 seconds. So for 30 seconds, you're essentially doing 15% increased damage to your main target. And on top of that, you also get 20% haste. So again, the tooltip is bugged on the BTR. So if I'm going to summon him, I uh, have him start attacking. As you can see here, target is taking 15% increased damage and I am getting 20% haste. It takes a little bit to stack up um, because, because it, it has to ramp up based on its cast. But once you get to 5, which takes approximately 10 seconds, uh, you do have 20% extra haste. So pair that with Unholy Frenzy, pair that with Bloodlust, pair that with doing 15% increased damage to your target. That is a nice chunk of burst that you will be able to do. Um, however, one thing with this, it, this is a pure single target trait. Um, there's no AoE scaling. The... Your pet will do about 150k damage. Uh, here it will depend on crits. I got three crits, so it did 166. But in the range of 150 to 180k damage. So that, you know, it's not bad. But the main thing that we're looking at here is getting the 20% haste and getting to do extra damage to our target. So I quite like this trait for single target. Um, the passive, your spells and abilities have a high chance to impale your target with a spike of Azerite causing 6,281 fire damage and increasing the damage taken by the target by 15% for eight seconds. Again, the tooltip is bugged. So whenever you proc this, you do get that effect on the target. They need to rename it uh, or reward it to your spells and abilities have a low chance to impel your target because the proc rate on this is absolutely abysmal. Um, I got maybe one proc per minute um, while I was testing it. So hopefully they increase the proc rate. And if they do keep the proc rate low, then please increase the damage on it. Now we get to the real one. <laughs> Memory of Lucid Dreams, and I talked about this in my Discord, uh, I talked about this with other people, you probably saw this pop up everywhere. And this is where Frost DK is making a comeback. This trait uh, is a 3 minute cooldown, and what it does is, or the tooltip here, clear your mind and attune yourself with the Heart of Azeroth, increasing your really power generation rate by 100% for 12 seconds. So, if I were to... So up to my frost gear here. So I'll hit this with an obliterate, I get 20 runic power, right? I pop that ability, when I obliterate, I get 40 runic power. Um, off of my RA ticks, this talent, instead of generating three runic power per auto attacks, or whenever it procs, I will generate six. So all your runic power generation is just doubled. And that is insane. Because obviously we're going to pair this with Breath of Sindragosa. And just to give you an idea here, um, I'm not sure how long this will go on for, but I'll just demonstrate Bloodlust, go in, do my opener. Okay, wait for some runes to come back. Pop my abilities like I would normally. Keep going, hit this dummy, there we go. So I'm getting runes back quite nicely. I'm not min-maxing my damage like to extreme, but just to give you an idea. My ERW ran out, now I'm going to pop this Azerite ability, and now look at my runic power damage, or my runic power generation. Absolutely insane. 
And as soon as it falls off, as soon as it falls off, um, I will have quite a few runes still up. So I'm able to just extend this a little longer. And there we go, it fell off. So that was a 45 second Breath of Sindragosa. Um, I know because my Pillar of Frost came up right as my uh, Breath of Sindragosa fell off. If you don't believe me, we can take a look at the auras here. Oh, it's 46 seconds, sorry. And keep in mind that that is without actually having any runic power gained from AMS. So in an actual encounter, I can AMS, take some damage, gain some runic power, and extend the Breath of Sindragosa even further. So look at the amount of damage that the Breath of Sindragosa did. Absolutely bonkers. Now, the thing with this is that it is a three minute cooldown. So it does not line up with your Breath of Sindragosa. So based on your kill time, you will have to make the choice. Okay, do I delay my Breath of Sindragosa a minute? Or do I just pop the second Breath of Sindragosa as it comes up? And then have, an, again, an empowered Breath of Sindragosa um, as my third one. So you'll have to play around with this a little bit. Um, and then again, the passive also does interact with our Breath of Sindragosa. So your spells and abilities have a chance to refund 50% of the runic power spent on them and immediately heal you for 16,290. And obviously the important portion of this is that your runic power spending abilities have a chance to refund half. So this applies to every single tick of Breath of Sindragosa and has a chance to proc on every single tick. Now the proc chance is not very high. Uh, during a 45 second breath you will get um, probably about 10 ticks of, of this proc. So each tick is 15 runic power, if I remember correctly. So you will get 7.5 runic power. And I don't know if it rounds up or down. I haven't tested this. Um, haven't tested this extensively quite yet. But yeah, this will be absolutely insane. Now for Unholy, this is way less beneficial because we do have that Unholy Frenzy build and our runic power is essentially only used to proc runic corruption. The damage from death coils is still fairly low. Um, and obviously the benefit for Unholy does come from having the ability to spend a lot of runes. Now, if they buff some Unholy Talents um, and buffer a Gargoyle, there is potential to use this trait for a Gargoyle build, which I'd be quite excited about. Moving on to Purification Protocol. This one is quite nice, uh, especially the passive. The passive of this is currently a little overtuned, I think. It has a nice proc rate, and it does absolutely insane, insane amount of AoE damage. On I was doing a little test on 4 target cleave, and it was my top damage by quite a lot. So there's no fall off damage, and it's just a linear scaling. Think of like Fel Barrage. Each target, whenever it procs, each target will have will take um, thirty eight thousand damage or thirty three thousand damage. Sorry. So on four targets, that's you know about one hundred thirty thousand damage. Now the, the active, I don't know how strong this will be considering some of the other traits, but it calls down a beam, and it just does AOE damage. I can show you how this works for six seconds in this area. If anything dies within it, you gain a 10% damage done buff for eight seconds. And whenever something um, else dies, the, this buff just refreshes. So every time a target dies, your buff uh, refreshes. So this, again, is just a straight up mythic plus trait. Moving on to the Crucible of Flame. So this is one of the first traits they actually showed us. Blast your target with the Ball of Consecrated Flame, dealing 21,000 fire damage to an enemy or healing to an ally, or healing an ally for 22,000 damage, and granting Ancient Flames for 5 seconds. So Ancient Flames, what it does, it's a buff that increases either the damage or the healing of this ability. At 1 stack, it increases by 100%. At 2 stacks, it increases by 300%. So just to give you an idea in how it works out in numbers, my first blast on this target would do 20k damage, my second would do 40k damage, my third would do 80k damage. Then my buff resets, and again I would cycle 20, 40, 80. 20, 40, 80. So how you will end up using this is pre-pull, uh, like 30 seconds before the pull happens, you just cast this on yourself, gain that buff, then wait the 30 seconds until it recharges, then go into the fight with 100% increased damage. So your first two would do uh, more damage. 
So the active, you just press it whenever it's up, essentially. It will be quite nice for classes who don't have self-healing, because not only can you use this as a damaging ability, you can also use it, use it as a healing ability. And healing yourself for 80,000 is pretty nice. That is pretty nice. Um, the passive, your spells and abilities have a chance to grant you Ancient Flame for 10 seconds, increasing your crit by 153. And again, the other part here is bugged. But your spells, your damaging and your healing spells have a chance to apply this and do 10% of their damage as a dot. So if I um, obliterate the target and it does 10k damage, I have a chance to proc this and it will do 1k more damage as a dot, just to give you an idea. So this will be interesting, especially for classes that have very hard hitting abilities. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see how this passive works out. Moving on to un Unbound Force, um, this is a very boring trait in my opinion. Unleash the force within the Heart of Azeroth, causing Shards of Azeroth to strike your target for its 1770, or 1750-ish damage over 2 seconds. Um, this damage is increased by 30% if it critically strikes, or each tick is 1700 damage. Um, overall, it comes out to be um, whatever that... There we go. So you get 13 hits times the 1700. Now here you can see for me it actually says 2000, and that's because of my versatility. This trait does scale with versatility, so the more you have, the higher this will do, and obviously you get uh, the higher multiplier on crit. Instead of 100%, you do 300%. So you just use it whenever it's up. Um, only single target, no other, no AoE benefit from it. Passive, each time you critically strike, you gain a stack of Reckless Force up to 7. And then every 10 seconds, your next spell or ability will blast your target with a bolt of Azerite energy, dealing 706 fire damage per stack of Reckless Force. So just take 706, multiply it by 7, and every 10 seconds you do that much damage. Um, very boring. And again, no AoE benefit. And considering some of the other traits, I don't, I don't see this having much use unless the damage tuning is correct. Moving on to Vision of Perfection. So this does something else for every single spec. For Frost, your spells and abilities have a chance to activate Empowered Rune Weapon for 50 seconds of its base cooldown. When the Vision of Perfection activates, the cooldown of your Empowered Rune Weapon is reduced by 10 seconds. Um, I don't like this trait for Frost, mainly because it desyncs your Empowered Rune Weapon from your Breath of Sindragosa, and that, that, that's a no-no. You want these two to be synced up. Um, and depending on how often it procs, it might desync it quite a bit. And Empowered Rune Weapon is not dead nuts, considering that all of our damage is within our cooldowns, um, and benefit because we stack our cooldowns together. So for Frost, this is not very strong. Um, each time you critically strike, you gain a stack of Reckless... Oh, I'm reading the same one again. Reduces the cooldown of your Empowered Rune Weapon by 16.5% and increases your versatility by 85. So if I look at this, our Empowered Rune Weapon will be 1.7 minute cooldown rather than 2. So again, it desyncs it from your Breath of Sindragosa, and I don't like that. So I don't think this will see much use on Frost. On Unholy, it is even worse. On Unholy, um, it applies to Apocalypse, so it reduces your Apocalypse cooldown from 1.5 minutes to 1.3 minutes. So it lines it up with your Unholy Frenzy. And its active, or its major power, is that you have a chance to proc one Army of the Dead Ghoul for 15 seconds. Which also reads as, you have a chance to do 10,000 damage, and that's it. It's absolutely useless for Unholy, um, and then it reduces the cooldown of your Unholy Frenzy or your Apocalypse whenever it procs by 10 seconds. Currently way, way, way underpowered, um, and it's also bugged so I can't show you how it works. As soon as the ghoul spawns, um, it just disappears and we don't get the CDR. So this needs a major, major look at for both Unholy and Frost. For Blood, however, this applies to Vampiric Blood. So that is very good defensively, assuming that it has a decent proc rate. Uh, when I was testing this on Unholy, it had a less than one proc per minute. Um, so I think that needs a look, because I would go through an entire 
a apocalypse cycle without getting a single proc sometimes. So I hope they increase the proc rate a little bit and just look at how this actually interacts with certain specs. Now, taking a look at the last trait here is World Vein Boon. Um, I will talk about the passive first, just to put it into context. Every 1 to 25 seconds, a shard of Azra interrupts from the nearby ground for 18 seconds, granting you 0 strength while you're within 8 yards of it. And this value is actually 396 strength. So if we hit the target here, and wait for a proc to happen, you'll see that it kind of spawns a little shard next to you, and that gives you strength and heals you. So the healing is 750 health per second, but it procs every two seconds, so it's 1500 um, healing every two seconds. Now, of course, when I'm trying to show it off, it doesn't want to proc. There we go. So we have one shard, 396 strength, and 1434 healing every two seconds. And this does scale. Um, I'm not exactly sure with what, I haven't checked, but for Unholy, for me, it was 1500. As Frost, it's 1400. So, as you can see, there will go a second one proc, the first one disappeared. What the Major does is that you can actually activate it and just call three of them. And that's it. So they also only last 15 seconds. So it's a nice strength boost. As you can see, I'm at 19, 1980 strength. Uh, one of them just disappeared, so I'm down to 1500 strength. But it's essentially like having uh, an unused trinket that its unused reads increase your strength by, what is it, 1188, while its passive is that your strength fluctuates. Um, a little boring, but for some specs, they, this can be very beneficial. Um, if you're like Frost Decay, for example, and you do benefit from strength because you have so many multipliers, this can be pretty nice. But other than that, um, we have so many other traits. Well, not so many. We have a few other traits that currently seem so overpowered that these generic traits just get blown out of the water and they will not see use unless they are overtuned. And this is quite sad to see. But again, this is just the first round of testing, first impressions. Hopefully they do a tuning pass to bring some of the insane traits a little back in line and maybe buff up some of the weaker ones to actually give us some sort of choice. But yeah, so I did submit a review document or a, a feedback document and hopefully they take a look at that um, because there's quite a few things to look at here and I understand that these are very difficult to balance because they're general and generic rather than class specific. But having these sort of balance to actually give us choice, which is what they want, uh, they do need to listen to some player feedback and make some changes before these go to live. Thank you so much for watching, and I will keep you updated on how these go and if any of the changes happen to them. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about these, make sure to leave them in the comments section below. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.